It's wonderful to see everyone here um, face to face. Um, and um, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity to uh, get back together. Um, and I hope you are all enjoying the conference. Uh, so if I also maybe uh, look back through history a little bit longer, I remember it was 20 years ago also at this conference uh, where I took my first uh, class in OPC taught by Kevin Lucas and uh, Luigi Capodieci was my first in-depth exposure to OPC. And I remember Kevin and Luigi were handing out uh, chocolates uh, during the class for people who asked questions. And uh, some of you might know, uh, I was a very, very motivated uh, student uh, back then because uh, Brian was uh, just starting our stealth mode uh, development in, in OPC. So I, I think I, I earned the most amount of uh, chocolate uh, in that class. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I don't know if uh, Kevin and Luigi are uh, here in the audience, but if you are, thank you very much. Um, and uh, yeah, um, and also thanks to everyone in the community uh, that uh, helped me grow over the years. Um, so um, my topic today is going to be e-beam inspection and metrology, um, some new developments and also applications in Litho. Um, and uh, since I work uh, for ASML, I thought it would be appropriate to start with the Moore's Law slide, which you also saw from uh, Martin's uh, keynote uh, yesterday. Uh, so looked at these uh, uh, multiple trend lines uh, driven by different uh, factors, uh, improving the scaling and the density. Um, and then zooming in uh, on the uh, next couple of decades. Um, and for eBeam, I'd like to especially point out uh, the middle two lines, the dark blue um, and, the, uh, and the green on the screen, these two, right? So these are driven by still litho density scaling and uh, the transistor density, uh, which uh, also goes into the third dimension. Um, so looking at uh, trend number one, litho density scaling, we, we expect it to continue. Um, uh, looking at the uh, DRAM case that it, as an example, uh, we see the shrinking uh, would continue well into the next uh, decade. So uh, for eBeam, uh, we, we think this will drive the additional demand for resolution uh, for both inspection and metrology applications uh, because of the continued the shrink in pitch. Um, and then the other trend is uh, the, the, uh, uh, the growth of uh, uh, 3D and 2.5D st uh, structures. The left hand side is the uh, roadmap from uh, iMac uh, on the logic side. The right hand side, a 2.5D uh, picture uh, from, uh, from Samsung. And this will drive uh, the demand for uh, high landing energy uh, on the e-beam side in order to see uh, um, buried defects and high aspect ratio defects and also uh, overlay metrology. Uh, so this slide I'll go very quickly because I, I think people know the basics of uh, uh, SEM. So start with an electron gun and uh, um, uh, you have a condenser lens that collimates the, uh, the E-beam. Um, and then uh, we have uh, the, the uh, uh, column with, uh, with the different lenses, uh, hits the uh, uh, wafer on the stage um, and then we have uh, in principle, uh, different uh, uh, locations in the optical system where we can place the detectors, right? So this is in-lens detector for the secondary electrons. Uh, this is also an in-lens detector uh, with some energy filter, uh, meaning it can select uh, the electrons uh, in certain um, uh, ranges of, uh, of energy coming back. And we can also have a, a bottom detector here close to the wafer, which would be uh, more suitable for uh, detection of uh, backscattered uh, electrons. So the key system requirements for uh, E-beam uh, are uh, high vacuum uh, to uh, really allow the electrons to go through uh, the, uh, the optics and also a uh, high voltage, which uh, also drives the, uh, the, uh, the need for cleanliness, right? So we don't want to have uh, particles which can uh, cause uh, small lightnings uh, in, these, uh, in these systems. Um, so uh, ASML operates in three major uh, application categories in eBeam. So uh, metrology and inspection and then in inspection, there are two things. Uh, and this is voltage contrast and this is what we call a physical inspection. And of course, the, this is uh, looking at uh, uh, metrology on the surface, uh, either for CD or EPE. Or if you have high LEN energy, uh, we can uh, see through multiple layers uh, for uh, overlay applications. Um, and this is a, a very uh, good picture I, I took from uh, Intel fellow, uh, Dr. Tuyin Tran, uh, who is responsible for uh, inspection uh, at Intel. 
uh, if, uh, if you only remember one slide from my talk, I like this one uh, to, be, uh, to be what you remember. So, so he showed a gallery of uh, defect, right? This was from uh, 2016. Uh, but then uh, he said for all these uh, defects, um, eBeam uh, was the only viable solution that can capture these defects. Uh, any optical inspection tool, regardless of the amount of inspection time, uh, we're, we're actually not able to uh, see these defects. So as the shrink continues, uh, the, the need for e-beam with this better resolution and better sensitivity uh, continues. Uh, but of course, uh, um, e-beam is uh, typically slow relative to optical solutions. Um, and uh, this limits the application of uh, e-beam inspection uh, for HVM. Uh, except in 3D NAND, uh, where we can afford uh, very large pixel sizes for some voltage contrast applications. Uh, we'll come back to this theme uh, and, and discuss uh, how we improve uh, throughput uh, with, uh, for example, a multi-beam. Uh, so just uh, maybe a quick tutorial on uh, how voltage contrast inspection uh, works, right? So on the left-hand side, uh, you see a P-well, and, and this is a uh, contact, right? So um, the, uh, in, in this case, uh, uh, there's a positive charge uh, being accumulated at the top of the uh, wafer surface, and the amount of the uh, positive charge can be a function of uh, various uh, factors, right? So it can be dependent on the extraction voltage, can be dependent on the secondary electron yield, um, and uh, if, if there's a low yield for the secondary electrons, uh, then I think you end up with, um, um, with more positive charging. Um, and uh, so what happens is if there's good connection electrically, right, so between the, uh, uh, the top of the surface and the bottom of this uh, P-well, then negative charges can migrate up here and neutralize the positive charge. Uh, so, uh, and then what this means is the secondary electrons would have not a big problem uh, to travel back to the detector, uh, resulting in a uh, uh, bright image for, for this particular hole. If there's poor contact, right, if it's broken here, uh, then you have accumulation of these uh, positive charges. And these positive charges would attract the electrons uh, that are trying to go back to the detector. Uh, so they can't you end up with, uh, with a, a dark voltage contrast. And this is how we detect these uh, electrical failures, right? So on the right-hand side, uh, we see some examples um, for uh, the, uh, the top view and the uh, cross-section view. And these are uh, real defects that we can find on the, uh, on the devices. Um, and E-beam is also capable of uh, uh, looking at uh, physical defects both on the wafer surface and also in the barrier structures. Uh, so here, uh, if we look at uh, the interaction uh, between the E-beam and the sample, right, you see a lot of uh, complex things uh, happening. Uh, but the, the main message is that uh, with higher landing energy, uh, we see more um, uh, signal from the uh, backscattered electrons, right? So, so in this example, uh, we show the uh, the picture right from uh, from different uh, landing energy, um, and uh, we see that uh, for for this particular landing energy, like 19 keV, um, uh, if you look at the backscattered electron, right, not the secondary electron, then you can actually uh, uh, see the uh, buried structure here um, better than than at uh, other conditions. So in practice, we would try to optimize the, uh, the landing energy and beam current conditions in order to uh, accentuate uh, the appearance of the uh, buried structures or the buried defects. So uh, we talked about E-beam um, suffering from uh, lower throughput relative to uh, optical inspection. So uh, this slide tries to uh, visualize, right? So up here we see optical bright field inspection uh, offering very high throughput, uh, but with the current uh, technology and current wavelength, uh, we think the, the sensitivity would probably um, um, start to, uh, to have issues down to maybe a 10 nanometer defect size. Uh, well, if we look at uh, single beam, uh, E-beam inspection, right? So we can detect uh, down to about two nanometer uh, defects, but at a much lower throughput, right? So, um, and as the node continues to shrink, uh, we see, uh, of course, that this, uh, uh, this picture also shifts to the right and driving for more need for, uh, for uh, resolution. Uh, but at the same time, we wanted to uh, also uh, improve the productivity or the throughput of uh, e-beam inspection tools. And our primary method at ASML is to introduce a multi-beam. Um, we have a uh, 
strong roadmap on the uh, multi-beam side, uh, spanning uh, multiple uh, generations. Um, and uh, we currently have this uh, Gen 1 product, uh, which is a 5x5 uh, multi-beam tool uh, out in the field. Um, and we're going through uh, some uh, customer application development. In 2025, we'll go to the second generation offering about a 10x uh, throughput improvement. And this would be our uh, ultimate uh, uh, mother of uh, all multi-beams, uh, which we hope will uh, provide uh, uh, throughput uh, comparable to uh, optical uh, bright field inspection. So uh, a quick look at the uh, optical design for our multi-beam uh, system, right? So still, of course, the, the top is, is the same with the condenser lens uh, and the source uh, multiplier. And, um, and we, uh, oh, here, we, we separate the, the beams, right? In, 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 uh, in the latest uh, example will be uh, uh, 25 beams. And then they would uh, uh, go to the surface of the wafer through one macroscopic uh, objective lens. Uh, and there will be also a deflected get together. There are some individual control capabilities uh, in the uh, MAMS device uh, for, for tuning of the focus or, or beam pitch uh, uniformity. Um, but then we still need to collect the uh, electrons that are coming back right, from all these different beams. Um, so to do that, uh, we introduce a secondary uh, electron column uh, over here. Uh, and when the electrons are coming back here, we introduce a beam separator, which is a mean filter, right? So the electrons going uh, from top to bottom and, and bottom to, uh, to uh, top uh, would be separated. Uh, so then uh, the secondary electrons uh, would be projected uh, through this uh, electron optic system uh, onto a, uh, a set of uh, detectors. Uh, and then this is how uh, we control the 25 beams together and also provide 25 uh, separate uh, um, scanned images. Uh, so uh, here, just wanted to uh, play a short video on the uh, high-speed uh, wafer stage uh, that is um, uh, as part of our multi-beam uh, system. Uh, it's been developed uh, by our colleagues uh, in, in Veldhoven who knows a thing or two about uh, wafer stages. Uh, but even for, uh, for the ASML, uh, there are some additional technical challenges uh, caused by the high vacuum and especially the high voltage uh, requirements. So, so how to uh, really uh, select the material and, and the architecture to make sure that uh, we don't run into uh, arcing, right? So it's a, a very uh, key concern uh, for, for uh, um, every e-beam system. Um, so uh, on, the, on the result side, uh, so I'm just showing uh, uh, the, uh, the capture rate of 90%. Um, this is done on a, a standard HMI test wafer, uh, looking at all the uh, program defects that we intend to capture. Uh, the capture rate is greater than 90%. And then uh, the 25 beams uh, show uh, uniformity in terms of their uh, imaging capabilities. So um, now going to uh, move on to uh, metrology. And for this, uh, um, uh, HMI provides this product called uh, EP5. Uh, which is a, a, a different beast compared to traditional CD SAM, right? It offers much larger uh, field of view, up to uh, uh, 12 micron or 12K pixels, and uh, also a larger uh, beam current, uh, which then provides uh, um, uh, higher throughput, right? So this then uh, enables a number of uh, massive uh, metrology applications uh, that, that we show on the, uh, the right-hand side. Uh, one example is our collaboration with uh, Micron uh, for a uh, EUV lithography enablement case. Um, so uh, what we did is we brought in the EP5 to provide massive metrology. Uh, and then with that, uh, we were able to quantify something we call a stochastics aware process window, right? So uh, this uh, larger oval, uh, the, the light blue oval shape is what we know traditionally as the boson curve uh, or the uh, or the CD based uh, process window uh, plus minus 10% uh, CD but if we look at the uh, 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 failure rate right so because of this uh, EUV stochastic effect uh, it turns out we get a, a much smaller uh, um, uh, process window right so and this drives the uh, the setup of the uh, scanner uh, operating point and also source uh, uh, source mask optimization and the resist selection uh, so together uh, with uh, with uh, Micron and other teams at ASML, we demonstrated 
uh, reduction in exposure dose um, and improvements in process window and also improvements in the uh, local CD, CD uniformity. Um, the uh, other product that we have in the metrology portfolio is uh, so-called EP5 XLE, which offers up to 30 keV uh, lining energy. And with this, uh, we can see uh, through barrier structures and also measure uh, overlay. Uh, so uh, this is one uh, example that we uh, demonstrated on a DRAM uh, bit line to active uh, overlay case. Um, and just showing the scatter plot of the measured overlay relative to the uh, programmed overlay for this case, uh, demonstrating uh, the, uh, the accuracy in the uh, overlay measurements. Uh, so I think uh, we're running a, a bit short on time, uh, but uh, a couple slides about uh, uh, edge placement error. Right? So this slide shows the various uh, contributors to um, uh, EPE, right? So uh, uh, local placement error, local CD error, uh, on top of the uh, traditional uh, global overlay and global CD errors and also the OPC errors. So for the local errors, what we do is uh, we leverage our large field of view, right? So uh, each field of view, we, we provide uh, measurements of a very large amount, uh, uh, maybe up to a million uh, contact holes. And, and with this, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, derive a lot of uh, local statistics, right? On the placement error and also on the local uh, CDU. Um, and this is our uh, overall view of uh, how the different metrology solutions from ASML would work together, right? So EP5 uh, on the bottom and also uh, uh, U-Star on the uh, uh, optical side, uh, still providing a better throughput. Um, but then if we uh, com uh, combine the uh, U-Star overlay measurements with uh, EP5 measurements for the uh, uh, local CD and local EPE, um, and, and go through some uh, computational solutions, uh, we can provide the overall uh, EPE assessment uh, uh, covering multiple layers. And on the right-hand side, uh, we're just showing the number of uh, scanner actuators uh, that we can, we can use for our control and correction capabilities as a function of time. Right? So um, we think to effectively drive all these uh, actuators on the scanner, uh, we need dense metrology and dense sampling um, in a reasonable turnaround time. Uh, so, so we provide the uh, better correction capabilities to our customers. Um, and this uh, is an example uh, from, uh, from IMAC uh, showing uh, that the EPE metric is a very good indicator of uh, what we call a voltage contrast yield, right? So um, on the vertical axis, we're showing the VC pass rate. So we measured uh, all these different holes uh, within this uh, field of view and green means pass and um, red means uh, not pass. Uh, so this, this is from a voltage contrast inspection application. Uh, but on the uh, horizontal axis, uh, we're plotting the uh, uh, relative uh, EPE, right, between uh, patterns in two layers. This is a, uh, a, a cut pattern. Um, and we, shot, uh, we saw a very good uh, correlation uh, between the VC pass rate and the EPE metric. So what this means is uh, we can use inline uh, EPE monitoring uh, as an early indicator or a predictor of uh, potential uh, yield issues uh, downstream in the process. Um, one other slide on, on the uh, link uh, between metrology and voltage contrast inspection. Uh, so I took this slide uh, from a paper uh, in, uh, in last year's uh, SPIE that actually won the uh, best paper award. Um, but in this case, uh, what, what we did uh, together with our customer Samsung was um, uh, we went in with a set of uh, uh, targets with uh, programmed uh, uh, shifts right, between two different layers. And uh, then we ran the voltage contrast inspection uh, and we looked at the correlation between the, the so-called VC shot term and the SAM measured uh, uh, overlay shot term. Uh, and shot term is just a, a name for, uh, for the intrafield component uh, of the, uh, of the uh, overlay error. Uh, we saw good linearity, uh, but then uh, the, the other uh, um, important finding is that uh, we saw a slight offset uh, between uh, the, the best overlay as, as measured by voltage contrast uh, versus the SAM measured uh, overlay, which is done with an image processing or a contour extraction type of algorithm, right? So this is 
important for our customers because they, they want to know where exactly should be the center point, where exactly should be uh, uh, the, uh, the target for overlay control and, and correction. And uh, in, in, in this day, you know, less than one nanometer is still significant. Right? Um, right, so uh, and this is my last slide, just uh, looking at how at ASML we like to uh, piece together all these uh, different solutions uh, from OPC and the R&D phase, right, so uh, all the way to, uh, to scanners uh, and passing through uh, lit, uh, uh, Edge. And, um, and we offer uh, U-Star in-device metrology for uh, after Edge overlay. And then uh, we talked about the uh, HMI EP5 metrology. Uh, and then also the uh, voltage contrast inspection uh, to provide validation uh, for uh, electrically uh, uh, driven yields and also the link to uh, EPE. And everything runs um, uh, towards the customer's uh, APC and uh, DC system. Uh, and uh, we provide this uh, little insight running on our virtual computing platform uh, to provide uh, integrated solution to our customers. Um, so th I think with that, uh, I will uh, wrap up and thank you very much.